A question people ask me um, every so often is whether you need to be flexible to do a behind the back weave or if uh, it's impossible to do a behind the back weave if you're big in girth. Uh, so I've dressed in this dinosaur onesie and I've got uh, some winter jackets on underneath it to give me some girth. And I'm gonna show you that even if you're big and not very flexible, you can probably still learn a behind the back weave. Um, and you're gonna learn this with me. And if, uh, if you happen to be a flexible skinny person, put on your dinosaur onesie and, uh, and play along. Okay, so get your poi and um, just take it in one hand, just one poi, one hand. Keep the shoulders completely fixed, completely fixed in space. Spin your poi forwards and cross back and forth. Okay. Now what you'll notice is this is quite a range of movement in your arm. Your arm has to come way over here to get past the far shoulder to do this move. If you bend your plane a lot, maybe not quite as far, but it's a lot of movement on this shoulder. Okay. Now you're gonna do this. Um, take, do it, you, you know, if you're right-handed, mirror me. So left hand, use your right hand. You're gonna turn your sternum to face the poi. Use both hands together, so your hands are now right in front of your sternum. And then using the turning of your body, cross back and forth. So this is what we call a jiggy. The name came from Arashi. So what you'll notice now, if you do it this way, you can even fix your elbows on your body. To see what I mean? You, know, you don't even have to wiggle your hands. It's all just in space. So now you're crossing, you can let go of this hand now. Now because of how you're turning, see my hand never comes past my sternum. So now it takes way less flexibility. My hand only has to go like this, instead of like this. Now, try turning the wrong way. So instead of turning with the poi, try turning against it, like this. That'll take some practice. And what you'll notice is that, of course, takes even more flexibility. That's the beginning, because you have to come all the way to here. Poof, pow, poof, ah, which is really hard. Now, oddly, that's exactly what most people do when they're doing the behind the back weave. Uh, and you have to rewire your brain to learn to do it correctly behind the back. So with me, we can face this way. Now, if you were to not turn at all, it would look like this. Which takes a lot of flexibility because you have to get your hand all the way to the far hip, which yes, takes flexibility. And the you know, more girth you have, the more flexible you will have to be. But the easy way to test whether you're flexible enough is this. Can you get your hand to your tailbone? Or to, you know, your tail. Can you get your hand to your tail? If you can, you're definitely flexible enough. It just means you have to learn to turn correctly with the poi. Because watch. If my tail follows my hand, it takes very little flexibility. Because what's happening now is my tailbone and my hand are moving together. I can even grab my hand to make sure that I'm moving my tail to follow the poi in the hand. But most people do the opposite because their brains are wired for how things move in front of them and it all reverses when it's behind you. So people actually do this. Which, as you can see, is already causing me a lot of problem with my big girth. And the reason they're doing that is they're trying to see the poi. So as the poi comes up here, they actually turn towards it. And look what happens. Ugh, look at how flexible I would have to be to make that work. Really difficult. Um, but it's this instinct we have to see, you know, it's an object flying in space. Of course we want to try to see it. Um, and it has to do with how our brain's wiring right and left and all of that behind us. So, this is the thing, if you do that, you'll have to relearn that. Um, and that will take some messing around until you get it. So it'll go like this. Get your poi spinning backwards. Let, let it be just where it is in space. Turn your tail to the poi a few times. Turn your tail to the poi. Turn your tail to the poi. Turn your tail to the poi. Right? Then you're going to turn your tail to the poi, and as the poi goes over past your shoulder and it's coming down behind you, you're going to turn. 
So I'm kind of facing, so see my hand slows at my tail. It's not the far hip, it's just the tail. Again, as it comes over the top, down behind me, I turn. Down behind me, I turn. Poof, 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 poof. And the reason your instincts might not want you to do that is this. You'll never see the poi. Right? I'm always turned away from the poi. I'm always turning when the poi is behind me. As opposed to this, which is what people do to try to see the poi. And it makes everything very difficult. So, that's what you'll have to learn. You'll have to, let's do it from the side here. It's, uh, you turn your tail first to the poi, and don't turn when the poi's coming up in front of you. You gotta wait. Wait till the poi's coming down behind you, and turn, down behind, turn, turn. You're turning when you can't see the poi. Boom, boom. And you need to get this deeply in your muscle memory. Now look, my hand's completely relaxed now. And I can even be like, I can even do it where the hand's actually Instead of being at my tail, it's actually on my right butt cheek. And if I move correctly, that still gets the poi around behind me. So if you can even, if you can put your wallet in your back pocket, you should be flexible enough to do a behind the back weave. If you learn to turn with it, if, you know, the efficient way. So again, with two poi, the efficient way to do it would look like this. See where my tail is moving with the movement of the poi? And I guess my tail's getting in the way. Whereas, what a lot of people do is this. And you can see how much harder that is. So, that's your step-by-step -step process for testing whether you can do behind back weave. You can put your wallets in your back pocket. You can probably do it. Um, and you gotta learn to move correctly, um, or eff efficiently, according to what I just said. Um, you can also make up your own way of doing everything. So, hope you're having a great day. I hope that helps.